What is going on, you guys? I'm your host, Stacey Cole Morgan, and you are listening to the Morgan Man Sports Podcast here on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Good Part HQ, or wherever you find your preferred podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are talking about the Atlanta Falcons, of who they selected in this year's 2024 NFL Draft, and also we are talking about Falcons' undrafted free agency market right here, guys, of who they selected after the draft. And also, guys, we are talking about week four online qualifiers for the major three tournament so without any further delay let's go get straight into today's action the following is a presentation of the belly sports media network welcome to the morgan man sports podcast i'm your host stacy cole morgan here on the morgan man sports podcast we talk atlanta falcons news pre-game predictions, and all other news surrounding the Atlanta Falcons. Touchdown, Atlanta! Also on the podcast, we talk Call of Duty League esports covering roster mania, major predictions, COD champs, player trades, and much more to get you ready for every single CDL weekend. Scuff goes through, and Scuff stands with the one-on-one in optic with the reverse sweep! If that sounds good with you, put on your Falcons jersey, grab your gaming headset, and let's get the show started. All right, guys, so before we get into all that right there, let's go ahead and get the housekeeping out of the way. Make sure you are hitting that like button on YouTube or Spotify, wherever you are listening to this podcast right now does tremendously help out the podcast grow each and every single day and it's all thanks to you guys and also guys i want to give back a little bit right here so look down below in the description i have put my links to robin hood and fundrise that's right ladies and gentlemen on fundrise you could get a 25 dollars voucher on me signing up using my link and of course i will be receiving one as well but you will also be getting that 25 dollars voucher towards your first investment on Fundrise, and for Robinhood, get a free stock on me. Now, the stock would be valued up to pretty much $5, 95% guaranteed pretty much, but if you are one of the lucky ones to receive any stock that is above $5, consider yourself very lucky. Now, I do want to disclose this is not financial advice, so please do not take it as financial advice right here, as I am not a financial advisor, so want to disclose that but again at the end of the day invest in yourself and invest in your future you will thank yourself later so now since we get that out of the way guys let's talk about the call of duty league first right here so last week the atlanta phase totally and i mean totally put the league on notice by decimating the new york subliners 250 to 105 in the very first hard point of the series. And you're thinking, what the hell is Atlanta Phase doing right now? Like, from Major 1, because I remember they completely sucked during Major 1. They was winning, e- or losing, excuse me, easy gunfights, not getting on the hard point, Draza wasn't being himself, and then just of all of a sudden, boom, Major 2 comes around, and Len Face turns things around. You got Selium shooting bodies. You got Draza tr- trash talking. Just pretty much everybody in the league right now saying that he's the CEO of Optic. You got Scrappy who is just totally decimated by Draza right now talking that trash. And you just love to see it. And this team right here, I believe it is just it is written in stone pretty much for this team to win COD champs this year. But we're still a little far away from that right now. But let's just say they do win the Major 3 tournament in Toronto. That would definitely be the icing on the cake, I do personally believe. So we are in a new week right here, ladies and gentlemen, talking about the Call of Duty League with, again, the Week 4 action. So Friday, May 3rd, you got three matches. Miami Heretics versus the New York Subliners. Optic Texas taking on the Boston Breach. That's definitely an easy 3 out right there. Vegas Legion taking on the Atlanta Phase. Definitely, I can see that being a 3-1. And for Miami Heretics, 
I see them dropping this one actually to New York Subliner in a three O. Saturday, May fourth, you got the New York Subliner taking on the Vegas Legion, Atlanta Phase taking on the Carolina Royal Ravens, and finally in your Monster Energy matchup, you got the Los Angeles Gorillas, who is now revamped and is two and O since their roster change, is going up against the Optic Texas squad again in your Monster Energy matchup. For Saturday's series right here, guys, I'm going to say Subliners 3-0 against Vegas, Phase 3-0 against Ravens, and off to Texas. I hate it for you Gorillas fans, but I think it's going to be a 3-1 in favor of Optic. And for Sunday, May 5th, you got the Miami Heretics taking on the Seattle Surge. I believe Surge can do this one in a 3-2. Toronto Ultra against the Minnesota Rocker. I see this as a 3-1. And finally, in your Monster Energy matchup, you got the Boston Breach taking on the Los Angeles Thieves. And you're basically your bottom four right there. So I'm I'm going to pick Los Angeles over this one in a 3-1 over Boston. I just don't see Boston doing nothing now since they let go of Slasher and Sim. I mean, because those two were your best players overall. And ever since then, it's just been a huge downfall. The Boston Breach is just not making much noise. And I hate to say that for that franchise, but they're just not doing anything right. So I say just just chop this whole season and, you know, or just go ahead and start looking to next year. It, of course, if there's going to be a next year, that is. Which I think there will be because now since the Activision lawsuit and everything crazy like that happening, I do believe that we can have an expansion season and this could just be an early opportunity to start looking at some free agents in the market if you are the Boston Breach. So those are your week four matches right there, guys. And let's do go ahead and update some CDL point standings as I've not been doing that for quite some time right here. So for your regular season altogether, the Atlanta phase does set at a comfortable 335 CDL points with a 23-4 and win-loss ratio. Toronto Ultra is behind them at 285 with a 20-6 and win-loss ratio. Up to Texas, 275, 20-8. New York Subliners, 190. 16 and 9, and of course, I'm going in order here for like 1 through 12. So, I've already said New York Subliners, Minnesota Rocker, 120, 9 and 16, Los Angeles Gorillas, 110, 9 and 17, Vegas Legion, 100, 9 and 14, and your Seattle Surge is sitting at 100 CDO points with 9 wins, 14 losses, and your Matt Win Loss Ratio. That is your top eight if the season ended today and the playoff started. Now your playoff qualification cutoff. The Carolina Royal Ravens, 95 CDL points, 8-16. LA Thieves, 90 at a 9-12. Miami Heretics, 80, 8-14. And, and finally, the Boston Breach, 50 CDL points, 5-15. Guys, the... The top eight is pretty much set. I'm sorry. I mean, you could see a Royal Raven sneak in there, but I mean, you're going to have to really have Vegas and Seattle just go absolutely just dog shit, just bombing it and lose every single series from here on out. But I just don't see that happening, especially with the Seattle Surge. Vegas, they're going to win a few matches here and there to stay probably right at that seven spot. But ultimately, I just don't think it's going to be enough to go any higher. So the Carolina Royal Ravens, they're definitely going to need some help after this major three tournament is over with. But again, the Ravens are going to have to win matches as well. They just cannot rely on Vegas and Seattle and even Los Angeles Gorillas, for that matter, to, to lose games. They got to win matches as well and let them lose matches at that same time. So if I'm looking at it right here, guys, I'm definitely looking at for your top three matches right here. I'm definitely looking at, gosh, 
I mean, this one is so hard because every match is pretty much good, but at the same time, they're not news, like kind of like headline worthy, in, in my opinion. But I will say for the Los Angeles Gorillas versus Optic Texas, I can see that being my third pick. Because Gorillas, they're 2-0 and with their roster change. You got Opta Texas, who are looking for revenge and starting to earn some CDL points and get back up there with FaZe. Uh, my number two, honestly, would have to be the Los Angeles Thieves taking on the Boston Breach. Is Thieves a legit threat after their loss still? Or was that just a big hoax in, in regards of are they a legit contender to compete for the major three tournament or championship? I should say. And I guess my number one match is going to be against Atlanta phase with the Vegas Legion. Is Atlanta phase going to be on such a dominant role that they're just going to sweep past Vegas in like a 30 minute time window. That's what I'm looking at. Can Atlanta Faze take advantage of the Vegas Legion and, of course, the Carolina Royal Ravens, who are bottom-tier teams? Can they just honestly 3-0 them in record fashion and make it to where they make history of not only the shortest series, but, like, the amount of kills, the amount of first-round bloods, you know, whatever the case may be. I think this is going to be a weekend for a phase to really shine and still put the league on notice. You did it last week against New York, but I think this is an opportunity to go up against these bottom tier teams and look, look what we did to the top four. Now let's see what we could do to the bottom four. That's how I would go into this weekend. If I'm Atlanta phase, we got the top four beat. Now let's try to beat the bottom four. Go figure. So those would be my top three matches. I ain't going to really kind of promote it too much, but it is what it is on that series right there. So guys, now we are transitioning over to the Atlanta Falcons side of things. So we are going to start talking about the undrafted free agents with the Atlanta Falcons. So the Falcons do agree to terms with 10 undrafted free agents. This is from Taryn Wack, if I'm pronouncing her name right. She is the Falcons digital team reporter. This was reported on April 30th, 2024 at 1126 AM. So the Atlanta Falcons have agreed to terms with 10 undrafted free agents. The team announced Monday, the 2024 draft concluded Saturday with the Falcons bringing in eight rookies from the seven round tent pole event. Then a second wave of discussions with former college athletes began. Below is a full list of the expected undrafted free agent signings that follow. So I'm going to go ahead and make this clear. I will be butchering a lot of names. So please do forgive me on that. So Ryan Cole, offensive lineman, Richmond University, Jaquay Jackson, wide receiver, Ruggers, John Paddock, quarterback, Illinois, Jaden Price, corner, North Dakota State, Anthony Sayo, corner, Mid-America Naz, Nazarene, I've never heard of that division, Ryan Sadburn, punter, Texas, Austin Stogner, tight end, Oklahoma, Trey Vale, Trey Vival, Minnesota State, Mandico, Isaiah Wooden, wide receiver, Southern Utah, and finally, Nolan Potter, offensive lineman, Northern Illinois. So congratulations to those guys for making the undrafted free agent signings. And welcome to the Atlanta Falcons. Hopefully you can make a career right here and work your way up the roster. So again, congratulations to those guys right there. If anything, I could see us maybe going after that Jaden Price, the corner. Because that was definitely a a need in the draft. So I can see why we selected actually three right here. Anthony Sayo and then Trey Vival. And as far as everything else, punter, I just don't see it happening with Ryan Sabern. Maybe he can be behind Bradley Pinion 
in my opinion right here. Well, that actually run right there. But maybe, yeah, again, Ryan Sabrin can be behind Radical Opinion. We'll see how things go with that. But Isaiah Wooden, wide receiver, Southern Utah. I consider that really being about a fifth string wide receiver. He's going to be way down the list. Which usually the undrafted free agents are usually kind of like third, fourth, and fifth strings on the roster if they're lucky. So, but it's still, again, congratulations to these guys. Hopefully you can ball out enough to where you can make the 52 man roster here in September. Now let's talk about the guys who are potentially going to be starters or if not, at least backups to the backups or just the backup. So in round one, pick number eight, the Atlanta Falcons does select Michael Penix Jr. quarterback Washington. Now, guys, this was definitely a surprise pick for the entire National Football League. We've sat on it. We can move past this, okay? And I actually, I do like the pick a lot better now than what I did at first because whenever we first heard Michael Penix Jr. announce from Roger Goodell for the Atlanta Falcons, everybody, me, uh, out of your Falcon mind, everybody in the Atlanta Falcons podcast and nation <laughs> was like, we just signed Kirk Cousins to a $180 million deal. hundred of that is guaranteed for four years. And we go select a top 10 quarterback with the eighth overall white pick, excuse me, knowing we need an edge rusher, a corner, linebacker wide receiver no we go quarterback very first round so again we have sat on it and i do like this pick because it does buy you an insurance policy for kirk cousins yes kirk cousins is going to be coming back he says he's healthy he's promising everybody that he's healthy ready to go for the season so we got to trust him on his word so if Kirk Cousins does play for, let's just say, three years. That's three years of Michael Penix Jr. learning and observing the game. Just like many other quarterbacks. Jordan Love, for example. He had to sit behind Aaron Rodgers for, what, at least a year, maybe two years at max. I don't remember the exact number. And look how Jordan Love turned out. Coincidence? I don't think so because he learned from the best. Aaron Rodgers. Patrick Mahomes, he sat behind Alex Smith in Kansas City that 2017 season, I believe it was. Or 2016, right in that little time frame. I want to say it was 2017. But sat behind Alex Smith. And he learned and observed from Alex Smith. All right, I could do this better than Alex. Alex could do this better than me back and forth situation. And then when Alex went down or got traded, I believe to Washington, that's when Patrick had to step up and look, he's a three time Super Bowl winning quarterback. Or I'm not sitting here saying that Michael Penix Jr. is going to be the next Patrick Mahomes or the Jordan love, but he will have a great mentor to look up to in Kirk Cousins because Kirk Cousins at the end of the day is a veteran quarterback. He knows the game. He knows how to read defenses. And he's going to teach Michael everything that he knows, but also ball at the same time and hopefully win the Atlanta Falcons a Super Bowl this season and many more, hopefully. So for round two right here, guys, we got Rook Oreo, 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 Oreo if I'm pronouncing this right. Again, sorry if I do butcher names, but he is a defensive tackle from Clemson. Clemson, excuse me, I cannot talk today. He is 294 pounds. Definitely, I do like this right here. Could potentially go into an edge rusher position if needed. Uh, round three right here, guys, we got Brylan, Braylon Trice. Offensive linebacker, or not offensive, outside linebacker washington 245 pounds definitely do like this one right here needed a linebacker possession we definitely got it for round four we got brandlin tortless tortless 
Defensive tackle, Oregon, 283 pounds. Definitely do like that signing. Round five, we got J.D. Brett Bretron, linebacker, Notre Dame, 235 pounds. Definitely like this pick right here. He was so good in college. Led the team with 76 tackles. Finals for the Wolfer Trophy, community service, uh, academic, Heisman. Started all 12 games with 7.5 TFL with 2.5 sacks, 5 PBUs, and forced fumble, and was named team captain. Round 6, you got Jace McLennan, running back, Alabama. Definitely did see a little bit of him right here. He was the team leader in rushing yards with 890 yards, played in 13 games with 12 starts, 15, 137, through 9.1 receiving. And then finally, pick 11, you got Casey Washington, wide receiver, Illinois, and Zion Logue, defensive tackle, Georgia, 314 pounds. So those are your top eight picks for the 2024 NFL Draft class for the Atlanta Falcons. So obviously, the big one, obviously, was Michael Penix Jr., which I've already discussed that. So we're not going to go much in details about that. So this draft, if I have to give it a an overall grade, I'm going to say it's also going to have to be a B minus. I just don't see this really being Terry Fontenot. Well, I mean, Terry Fontenot has already been with the Falcons now for, what, three, four seasons now. But I'm talking about for Raheem Morris. This is not a good start for your tenure as a head coach for the Atlanta Falcons by doing this kind of draft right here. You knew you had holes to fill at, again, linebacker, corner, wide receiver, you know, whatever the case is. And you did fill those positions. I will give you that. But you still did not feel edge. So hopefully your defensive tackle in Rug Orioro uh, for Clemson, can go into the edge position. position. Who knows? Or Brandon Dorless from Oregon. One of them two can hopefully fill the edge position. Or you can go into the free agency market yet again and find you an edge rusher. Just saying. So again, I give it a B minus, guys. What do you give the Atlanta Falcons 2024 NFL Draft class? Do you give an A, B, C, D, E, whatever? I want to know your opinions in the YouTube comment section below or in the questions from the Spotify page if you are listening to my podcast on Spotify. But guys, I sure hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure to like button wherever you are listening from iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your favorite podcast from. Make sure to smash that like button on YouTube download this podcast on spotify give me a five-star rating if you do enjoy listening to me each and every single friday at 6 a.m eastern standard hopefully it is good enough to get you to your commute from work and hopefully back safe and sound each and every single friday but until then guys i go work and catch you all later peace thank you for listening to this belly up sports podcast network product some said we go belly up so we made it our name and we're still here